Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. I was talking about faith. I, well, I'm always talking about faith. Because that's the most important topic in this life. He said, love is the greatest. There is no dispute. It is the greatest. But without faith, you cannot achieve that status of the God that is love. By faith, you can overcome the entire kingdom of darkness. A man was giving that testimony and was talking at Ambrobi, let's pray. I said, what's your problem? If you have faith, you subdue them. Then he asked me, have you faced them before? I said, no. He said, that's why you're talking the way you're talking. Then I knew that um, I needed to face some robbers to prove what I was saying. I don't think you've ever, I don't know, how many of you have heard the pastor pray like that. He said, oh God, bring me in contact with arm robbers. I beg you in Jesus' name. How many of you have ever prayed such a prayer before? I guess you always pray, oh God, let our ways and the ways of arm robbers be like east and west. Day and night, they never meet, right? I said, oh God, bring me in contact with them. I need to prove this grace. And two weeks later, that prayer was answered. And I met them face to face. They blocked the road. They had this black thing. You know, I used to think those things you watch in movies, that they put those black things. I thought it was just for movie, commando. I saw with the robbers like this. Had those black things. One had this bulletproof with this machete-like charm on his neck. And the submachine gun, so the bullet was round. And they blocked the road, nobody could pass. And you know, the Bible says by faith, the children of Israel cross. And the Egyptians too thought it was just ordinary. So I drove towards them. I said, hey, move out of the way, I want to pass. And they moved out of the way. <laughs> I asked the person, are you scared? He said, no. So you have nothing to worry. And I drove through. And I guess I saw a V-boot. He thought that they just drive through. So he too was driving through, coming towards them. And I watched them unleash bullets with submachine you could hear the sound of the reverberation of the gun everywhere unleash i don't think the person in that car can survive it they just unleash bullets towards the person so i came back i said i've done it i've overcome them so now i can talk they said now we'll listen to you praise god and that's how we subdue boko haram and crush all those heads it's by faith it's by faith. What are the benefits of walking by faith? What do I stand to gain by walking by faith? Why do I need to walk by faith? Because many people believe the faith walk is more difficult than the natural walk. It's not really. It's just a style that we're not used to. Once you get used to it, it becomes easy. Amen? Amen. So what are the benefits of walking by faith? Why do I need to please God? You know, in the book of Revelation, or Colossians 1.16, it says that we were made by him, for him. Revelation 4.11 says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. For you have made all things for thy pleasure. So everything is created to please God. You were created to please God. Your marriage is created to please God. You know, I told somebody, I said, your marriage was never designed for happiness. They looked at me in shock. I said, when they tell a man who is just getting married... To a woman called Mary who just gave birth to Jesus and said, You can't touch her for one year. Is that pleasurable? Honeymoon, you can't touch her. The pregnancy is not yours. You just stare at her, just get married, and everybody say, What's happening? Say, It is well. You have to say it is well. <laughs> is that pleasurable? When they tell us here, take a prostitute and marry her, does that look good? I said, What is important is that your marriage pleases God, not you. Sounds shocking. Marriage was not designed to please you. 
Because God built marriage. God built everything for himself. And if your marriage is pleasing God, then you will be fulfilled. People seek fulfillment from the husband. It's a wrong place. Seek fulfillment from the wife. It's a wrong place. All fulfillment comes from God. And God says, what I intend to accomplish on earth, I'm accomplishing through this marriage. And that's why you find some of the most dysfunctional marriages are the ones that the angel of the Lord led them. The Abraham servant says, the angel of God has led me. He said, when he prayed, he said, let the woman who brings her picture and let her be the one you have chosen for thy son, thy servant Isaac. So who brought that marriage together? God! Was that a functional marriage? No! Was it pleasurable? No! Was God in it? Yes! Was it fulfilling purpose? Yes! Was God pleased? Yes! Was man pleased? No! Benefits of walking by faith. So quiet. Very quiet. Too quiet. Now, you can enjoy your marriage. I want to see the smiles now. <laughs> and you know why God does all that? When you're pleasing him and you have issues, then you can go to him and say, Lord, I have a problem. Say, so what's the problem? So my husband is dull in the act. Then he says, get him this, this, this. Then he becomes active. Then you say, oh, God, he's too much. I need him to reduce. Then the Lord said, do this, do this. He said, oh, God, it's too much. I can't, I'm tired. Then the Lord, he tells you what to do. Am I communicating? He tells you what to do. What you're looking for is a known issue to God. He tells you she doesn't need to have a womb. She can have kids. So I need a tall woman. Say so you can increase their length. You don't need to marry a tall man. Sort of purpose will increase his length for you. You don't need to marry a rich man. It's better to marry one rich, you know? Praise Jesus. Yeah. Say amen. amen. If you have faith, you make money. Say amen. 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 Hebrews 11, 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. That's God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So, the only way to please God is by faith. It's the only way. There is no other option to please God except by faith. And you were created to please God. That's the primary and the first person you're created to please in life. God and God and God alone. So faith is crucial because without faith, you cannot please him. All he wants from you is faith. You know one thing that shocks me about faith? A man can live a reckless life for 70 years and in one day takes a step of faith and that one act of faith makes him what they call righteous. The Bible says by which Abraham was declared righteous and wipes out all the negative life he has lived from the beginning of his life till that date. And not only that, he surpasses all those who have lived well that never walked by faith in this world and the world to come. It's something you cannot run away from. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 1 verse 16 to 17 says that I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ Jesus for it is the power of God unto salvation to them that believe to the Jew first and also to the Greek for therein the nature, the character, the ability of God is revealed. How? From faith to faith. You cannot know God by studying God. You cannot know God by going to Bible school. 
You cannot go know God by being taught. You can only go by being revealed. No man can teach you God and you know him. It's not possible. You can only know God by him being revealed. Romans 11, verse 33. Romans chapter 11, verse 33. And it says, All the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments, his ways are what? Past finding out. It cannot be found out. It cannot be searched. It cannot be found out. It can only be revealed. And it can only be revealed by faith. So, you know, I asked myself once, why a young man was kidnapped, I'm trying to remember the country, I think it's Syria or Afghanistan, I can't remember, he was kidnapped a Christian, and they were trying to make a ransom by terrorists. You know, there's a difference between a kidnapper and a terrorist. May you not fall into the hands of a terrorist. Because a kidnapper wants to take the money and enjoy it. A terrorist is ready to die and blow up the money and yourself and himself. <laughs> That's a terrible being to, to confront. It's worse than, I don't know, maybe if there was terrorism in the Bible, you know, they said to meet a bear that his child has been stolen is better than to meet a foolish, a foolish man. I think they would have said, <laughs> maybe they would use terrorists. He was kidnapped by terrorists. I watched the interview by the BBC. And he said, why in the kidnappers dead? Jesus appeared. I said, get out. And he said, Jesus, you see people with AK-47 shouting at them to shoot me. You said I should walk out. I said, walk out. He said, I should walk out. He said, while he was saying that, they were looking at him. Then they started talking and they started quarreling. He said, he just got up and walked out. And that's how he left the place. So when he was telling the reporter, who was I showing? Was it you? It was you I was showing to you. No, the reporter was looking at him. He said, no, what's wrong with this man? Jesus just appeared and he just walked out of terrorists. And he said, yeah, I just walked out. You know, they look at him with scorn that it cannot happen. But it happened. Then I asked myself, what is it about this headsman? What is it about the headsman? Is it not just gone that the Bible says those weapons will not prosper? And the church is being harassed. But don't worry, it will not continue. Amen. Amen. It will not continue. Amen. A man in his household overran four nations. The Queen of England said, I fear the prayers of John Knox more than the armies of England and France put together. We'll see very soon, don't worry. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. In 1 Corinthians 15, 34, he says, some don't know God. Look at what God said about that. 1 Corinthians 15, in verse 34, he said, I wait to righteousness. Sin not for some, have not the knowledge of God. He said, I speak this to your shame. He said, you are a shameless Christian. You're a shameful Christian if you don't know God. That means if you're not walking by faith, that Christian is a reprobate said, I speak because you can't know God except by faith. And he said, if you don't know God, he said, I speak to your shame. He said, this is a substandard human being. He doesn't know God. He's not pleasing God. Praise Jesus. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Coyote Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Surulere Lagos. Get a copy today. Why must you only go by faith? Because the Bible says that first, God dwells in light unapproachable. In Him is light and no darkness at all. And Psalm 97 verse 2 says, there's a darkness around God. That darkness is a mystery. It's a mystery that only faith can penetrate it and look upon him face to face and say, oh God. You know, what Paul said, if I will boast in anything in this life, he said, I will boast that I know God. And if I too will boast, and I thank God that he revealed himself to me, I will boast that I would no God. One day God appeared to me and said, I want to show you my weaknesses. I said, that's dangerous. I can use it against you. 
He said, I know. But this Bible says the weakness of God is greater than the wisdom and the strength of men. So God has weaknesses. He said, you need to know my weaknesses and my strength so that when you're facing me, you can always have your way and navigate yourself through. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. In Philippians 3, from verse 9 to 10, Paul said that I may know him. That's his prayer. That I may know him. That I may know him. That I, that's one of the benefits of faith. You will know God. You will know God. If you walk by faith, you will know God. I keep saying it. If God enters Nigeria now, most Christians will know him. They're very religious, but not spiritual. Very, very religious, but not spiritual. The Bible says in, Ark, in Jude, Archangel Michael, Satan, the condemned arch enemy of God, condemned judge to eternity to condemnation. When Archangel Michael descended and saw Satan, the Bible says he dared not speak against him or speak to him anyhow. He still showed him respect. But you know, in the Nigerian church, they run down the leadership of the church. Even Eli condemned of judgment. Someone dare not speak against him. And that's why I know that part of what we're seeing is judgment against the church for their mouth that runs like wild dogs. Bible says, he that keeps his mouth keeps his life. I've never seen any Christian that runs his mouth negatively than the Christian in Nigeria ever since creation till date, and I don't think there ever will be till the end of the world. But it's okay. As bad as it is, we're still the one God has chosen for his last move on the face of the earth. He says, can anything good come out of Nazareth? He's saying, that Nazareth, that's where the Messiah is coming from. Praise the Lord. Praise, that's a good place to say amen. So one of the benefits of walking by faith is that you will know God. You will know God. You will know God. When you know God, when you know God, when you know God, you will know God. You will know the Almighty that was before time, before creation. I keep wondering how he existed. He just existed. The Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. You will understand them. You will know when he's upset. You will know when he's happy. You will know what to appease him with. You know, the Bible says Moses knew the ways of God. He didn't know God. When God told him you will not enter the promised land, those that know God know how to arm twist God. He said, it is the Lord like Eli. Let him do what pleases When God said, De David, this is how you went. David said, no. It's not going to happen that way. Let's negotiate God. He negotiated and had his way. Because why? He knew God. He knew God. When you know God, you can have your way with God. You know, when you know your husband very well, and the staff comes and says, you are sacked. And your client says, don't cry. Say, you know, say, go and sleep, worry. Come, that's madam. Say, come tomorrow. Hey, leave that one. She knows the husband. She knows what to do. That he will call the staff back and say, you are reinstated. She knows him very well. <laughs> and that's how he do it with God. And that's why when they know God, God never has a final say. They do. When God says, I will wipe out this girl, they say, no, God, you can't do that because of God. said, okay, I've pardoned according to your word. And they have their way. Now, if you have your way with God, then what else? Praise Jesus. Yeah. One of the benefits of walking by faith is that you will know God. My prayer is that you know him. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. First Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 8 says, For bodily exercise profited little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having the promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. So what is he saying there? He said when you go and do exercise, if you see some people, I watch people do exercises, and they do so much exercise and exercise and exercise, and they shed weight and they look trim. Then they stop doing exercises. For like six months, eating up and down the place. Then you see them looking bloated up again. Say, oh, what happened? Say, oh, my brother, I had this job. I had to go out early in the morning. I didn't have time for exercise. See everything now. No, I didn't say it. You said it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And they're so big and you're wondering. So why? Bodily exercise profits a little means temporarily. When you exercise your faith once, 
He says, it profits you both now and into the world to come. Some of the um, people, when you read, now in Hebrews 11, Rahab's name is there. That by faith, she hid the spies, right? Did you hear of her do any other act of faith? Now, because of one act, if she was jogging and jogging and jogging, she would have been slim. Then after what she will add and slim. It's temporarily, it comes and goes. But that one act that she did, now the Bible even made it clear so you don't forget. Rahab the harlot did one, one, one act of faith. Number one, it saved her entire family. Just one. Number two, it incorporated her name into the general genealogy of Jesus. Number three, she has what they call eternal reward. Even if she does no act of faith against it, she does. In fact, was there any record she did another one? Just one. She has overtaken many today. Just one. Just one. Number four. Anywhere you go into the archives of God, forever and ever, you'll be here reading of Rahab. Number five. She has a throne in the throne room. Number six. She can see God. While many Christians may never see God. Just one act. Just one, not two. Just one. Abraham did many. We understand. But Rahab the Harlot did one. So the Bible is saying it's better to exercise your faith once than exercise your body your whole life. Because after you've exercised your body your whole life, you still need to keep exercising and exercising to maintain the profit. Say, so, but if you exercise your faith once, your profit is permanent and eternal. Even if you never exercise your faith again. Is it not worth exercising your faith? The moment you exercise your faith once, I, I, I think I said this, in heaven, we'll all be the same but not be equal. Some will sit on thrones, some will stand. And I saw a great multitude standing before the throne of God, waving palms. Those are those who didn't walk by faith. And those who walk by faith, they're called elders. Hebrews 11. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders. So everyone who walks by faith is an elder. Go and check in the throne room, the 24 elders. So all those who walk by faith, enter the throne room. Those who don't walk by faith will never enter the throne room. Even if it's only once you exercise your faith, you are qualified to enter the throne room. Then you should walk by faith. I tell people I have the fastest selling, the most precious commodity on earth. Is a function of time. <laughs> Praise God. For the... <laughs> Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. So exercise your faith. If it's only once you can do it, do it. <laughs> and have a throne forever. A young friend of mine told me, he said, I had a dream. So what's your dream? He said, I saw in that dream, I was in heaven. I was moving from section to section. And I saw multitudes. He mentioned the church where he was. Multitudes upon multitudes. He said, then I left there. Then I went to another section. It was different. And here they had thrones. They were like in a garden. He said, and I saw Paul. I saw James. I saw John. I saw Jesus. They were interacting with the world. Jesus can interact with the multitudes. They have not, he said, can two walk together except they agree? He can't add, he can't, they can't talk. You know, there are certain people you can't talk with on certain things. For example, if I go to the market, I can discuss certain things with, even some political areas that things you can discuss, right? But there are areas you can't discuss. You just say, no, this person is intellectually deprived, can, can understand what you want to say. They can't just get it. So Jesus will sit with those on the thrones because they're the ones that know him. By faith, they are qualified. They partake of his nature. So he, sits, he said, they serve them fresh fish. And I don't know what the food was. He said they were eating. He said, after what Jesus said, my father sends for me. I must go. Then he said, Paul, James, John. I said, did you see me there? He said, no. I said, you didn't see well. <laughs> I said, you should have looked well. I was probably one of the people back in when you were coming like this. I was sitting like this. You should have looked well. I said, <laughs> praise Jesus. He said, then Paul said, the Lord, in his discussion with the Father, ask for me, I shall be back. He said, then he went to sit on Paul's seat. He said, nobody even questioned him. Nobody said, get up from there. No. 
So they just continued their discussion. But he said what they were speaking was strange. He didn't understand until Paul returned. He said, get up from my seat. You're not qualified to sit on that throne. And he had to go and woke up. He said, what does it mean? I said, you need to go to where faith is being taught and learn it and walk in it. That's your destiny. Otherwise, you will lose what God has for you and you'll be relegated to the multitudes. That's that. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hope I'm whetting your appetite to want to walk by faith. Right? Yes, sir. Number three. And this is what our brother was saying. John 8, 29. If your life pleases God, if you walk by faith, John 8, 29. Jesus was speaking and he said, He that sent me, that's the Father, has not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. If you walk by faith, God will be with you. Let me tell you some of the benefits you can enjoy if God is with you. Bible says that the Lord was with Joseph, gave him favor in prison. He said that one now, Proverbs um, 16, 7. He said, all your enemies. Why do you want to go about with all your enemies, fighting them? No, just please God and let them all be at peace with you. You know, he said to the church of Philadelphia, he said, your strength is small, but you have kept the word of my patience. I, now to the church of Simeon, he said, hold fast what is left. He said, I know where you are, where the seat of Satan is. He said, hold fast to death. There's no deliverance for you. Keep my name unto death. He said, some of you are about to be put in prison. He said, hold fast. It is how I deliver you. Hold fast unto death. Then he said to Philadelphia, he said, you have kept the word of my patience. He said, I will make them, the same people of Simeon, of the synagogue of Satan. To do what? To come and worship at your feet. Check the reason why he said he would do it. You have kept my word. You have pleased me. You have walked by faith. I will make them come and worship at your feet. That they may know that I have loved thee. You have two options. Chase your enemies, bind them, lose them, crush them, or just please God and make all of them bow before you. That's one of the advantages of walking by faith. I believe you have been blessed by that message. And I know your faith has been built up. And I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you don't give up. Faith works. It's working and it will work in your life. God bless you.